actually this particular thing is not new and is not at string theory's door. It is, it rests with the Copenhagen interpretation itself, which by its construction is not falsifiable. And this has been beautifully argued by David Bohm in yes, his sir. efforts to kind of critique quantum theory. And okay. so the question is really, I mean, I mean, it, what's the, the, the present dialogue about falsifiability of theory actually seems rooted in the precedent of uh, Copenhagen interpretation. No, I would like to slightly differ with you, Sadiq, huh? because particularly, I mean, not just in Copenhagen interpretation, but in discussions of quantum mechanics. I mean, I would like to actually say that people who did not accept this hypothesis or this premise and continued to continue their quantum mechanic, uh, their explorations in quantum mechanics have been now responsible for many of the new developments which we are seeing. You know, all the quantum, all the quant things quantum that are now becoming a big uh, thing. So in fact, I would say that this actually proves that one has to continue asking questions and that's why I said questions of principle about a theory, uh, theory's falsifiability. And right now, I mean, this happened in quantum mechanics, I agree with you, and it was a famous dialogue. But now we know that people who continued not believing in that actually made tremendous strides in theoretical uh, understanding. So I would actually say that even, even for string theory, I see now even I'm, it's, as a string theory, I'm actually a kind of a big supporter of the ideas of string theory, not because it will give us the final theory, but because it's beginning to make us understand why field theories work. So to me, it's a theoretical construction which goes beyond field theory. And quantum mechanics, quantum field theory have been sort of the steps of the same mechanics, right? Classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, uh, classical field theory and quantum field theory. And to me, string theories are now coming at a stage where they are beginning to make us and help us understand how field theories with strong interactions might work. And to me as a theoretical physicist, that is a big step forward. And to my mind, people who used to think that this is a theory of everything has indeed retreated as time has gone along. And that's why I added that last line that in theory, uh, in his dreams of a final theory, he had added this statement, and I think it was a very prophetic statement, that if indeed this was theory of everything, then the business of science was over. Because the business of science as we understand it is to uh, uh, explain, observe things in terms of a framework and make predictions also. And those predictions can be predictions in my mind of uh, simply technical uh, nature, uh, not something that you experimentally measure, but they can, and, and technology is moving in directions. I mean, again, taking back the example of quantum mechanics, if the technology hadn't developed to the level at which it has developed, we wouldn't have been able to make and understand the statements about uh, entanglement and what have you that are now possible. So I think, you know, it's a continue, it's a progress of science and Copenhagen interpretation was one step in quantum mechanics. Similarly, the dreams of a final theory was one step. And I think we have passed, in my mind, dreams of final theory are just those, they are dreams. But on the other hand, the theoretical developments are not to be looked down upon because they are giving this fantastic methodology, the technology, to understand the complicated bits of field theory, which were swept under the rug in the case of, uh, by the normalization, by the likes of Dow, uh, Dyson and Schwinger. Maybe we will begin to understand some of the, I would say, secrets of field theory through these methods. So I, I think, I mean, for example, the important thing is unitarity, okay? I mean, unitarity is one principle, just like quantum mechanics, you cannot, uh, object to it. I mean, unitarity has to be true. Now, what we are finding using string theory methods, that just the demands of unitarity is giving rise to the string uh, field uh, amplitudes that we calculate in field theory. So there is something there. There is some understanding of nature 
the mathematical underpinnings of this uh, vast enterprise that has been built since Newton. I think it's worth it. But I hope I have given enough of my uh, outlook. <laughs>